London's heavy lift modernization has quietly cleared another gate, and the signal from Whitehall is that the Royal Air Force's H-47 Extended Range Chinook program is moving on the timeline the government set out earlier this year. Officials told Parliament that the first two ER airframes are already in build at Boeing's Philadelphia plant, with initial deliveries to the UK expected from 2027. Fourteen aircraft are on contract to replace the RAF's 14 oldest Chinooks in a phased handover designed explicitly to avoid a dip in availability. Beneath the procedural language lies a deliberate bet, preserve today's lift while buying tomorrow's range, and do it without creating a capability valley during the transition. The portfolio oversight now sits under the newly established National Infrastructure and Service Transformation Authority, which has been tracking delivery confidence across major defense programs. Its summer 2025 commentary flagged certification as a risk area, not because the airframe is a conceptual leap but because cross-border approval can bog down when data, test evidence, and technology release permissions move at different speeds on either side of the Atlantic. The Ministry of Defense says those frictions are being managed with preparatory flight trials penciled for 2027 and final certification targeted by the UK Military Aviation Authority thereafter. This is the familiar choreography of allied procurement, the drive to protect sensitive subsystems and software interfaces meets the operational imperative to get the aircraft on the line. What the RAF is buying is evolution with tangible payoff. The H-47ER keeps the Chinook's hallmark tandem rotor layout but refreshes the cockpit into a modern, full-glass environment and couples it with a more capable digital autopilot and updated flight management logic. These are not cosmetic upgrades. In practical terms, they are aimed at shaving workload during instrument departures, arrivals in confined landing zones, and night operations in complex terrain precisely the moments when crew bandwidth is at a premium and safety margins depend on stabilized cues and reliable automation. The ER badge earns its keep through larger lateral fuel tanks integrated into the sponsons and efficiency improvements derived from the Block 2 standard. More fuel and better burn rates translate directly into usable radius, which in turn changes how commanders think about staging, resupply, and recovery. Power remains anchored in the T-55 engine family, a choice that is as much about margin as it is about commonality. Hot and high conditions are punishing for any rotorcraft, an extra cushion in power availability preserves hover performance and keeps underslung lift credible when ambient temperature and density altitude conspire against you. That matters for the bread and butter tasks the RAF performs with Chinooks hauling artillery and engineer loads, moving palletized NATO cargo, and inserting or extracting teams with full kit. Survivability is being brought forward as well. Publicly available documents point to Northrop Grumman's Common Infrared Countermeasure Suite for the new subfleet, an acknowledgement that contemporary infrared threats will be a constant in the operating environments the UK expects to see. Pair that with UK-sourced elements in the flight control and support ecosystem, and the program sketches a balance between allied interoperability and domestic sustainment leverage. The schedule now in view draws from two parliamentary markers. A written answer on May 13, 2025 confirmed construction of the first two ER airframes, setting the 2027 delivery expectation. Another answer clarified the transition plan, new aircraft will progressively replace the oldest Chinooks from January 2027 onward. This sequencing sounds bureaucratic, but it is the heart of the risk strategy. Heavy lift fleets are the last place a military wants a bathtub in availability, because the helicopter hours carry so much of the logistics burden for dispersed land forces and maritime task groups. Swapping like for like in an orderly queue may be unglamorous programmatics, but it is precisely what keeps operations steady when the rest of the defense portfolio is competing for money, manpower, and hangar space. On the human side, London has already begun setting the table. Instructor training for UK aircrew in the United States kicked off in August 2025, in parallel with progress on simulation tools that will anchor conversion pipelines. This is the upstream work that keeps new hardware from languishing on arrival while squadrons scramble to build currency. 
The RAF also leaned into joint training with USMH 47G units in 2024 to rehearse helicopter aerial refueling procedures. The United Kingdom does not field an organic helicopter air to air refueling capability today, but exposure to the tactics, techniques, and crew coordination around tanker hooks and night plugs is a force multiplier in coalition environments where American assets may be available. It is also a hedge. Procedural fluency means the RAF is not starting cold if policy or budget later brings a refueling option into scope. Operationally, the ER variant is designed to change the math of distance and tempo. More range means fewer intermediate stops, fewer force protection packages tied to those stops, and fewer sorties to achieve the same logistical effect. In a theater where forward bases are scattered and roads are vulnerable, or simply slow, an ER Chinook can tie together nodes that were previously two lift problems. It can insert a full section in a single rotation or pull a team out of an austere LZ without a self-imposed radius constraint that forces risk-laden compromises. Add the cockpit clarity and stabilized automation, and the payoff shows up at night in valleys, on ship decks, and in those dusty, loose soil approaches that have historically eroded safety margins. The promise is not just reach, it is steadier, safer reach that preserves crews and airframes over time. None of this is happening in a geopolitical vacuum. From the Baltic to the Eastern Mediterranean, air logistics is again central to deterrence and crisis response. Amphibious groups need vertical lift with legs to sustain littoral operations without exposing slow surface connectors. Land brigades spread across multiple forward areas need predictable, high-confidence resupply and casualty evacuation windows. Special operations forces require aircraft that can get in and out quietly and with enough fuel to handle weather, diversions, and pop-up tasking. The UK decision therefore does more than refresh a fleet, it pads out NATO's shared heavy vertical lift inventory with a platform that can be tasked across the Alliance's most demanding mission sets, using a training and sustainment spine that is already interoperable with the United States. The skeptics' questions are fair. Certification is still a moving part, and history is unkind to programs that assume information will flow smoothly across export control regimes and safety authorities. Inflation, supply chain fragility, and workforce churn in the aerospace sector can conspire to turn neat Gantt charts into scribbles. And because the RAF will continue flying legacy Chinooks during the transition, sustainment budgets must carry both the new and the old at once. Yet the mitigation moves are visible, oversight is concentrated, the handover is phased, instructor cadres are already forming, and the ER configuration leans into proven architectures rather than exotic reinvention. If any helicopter program has a credible path to, on plan, it is one that wraps incremental airframe changes around the greatest hits of the Chinook lineage. If the schedule holds, 2027 will mark the beginning of a measured but meaningful step change for Britain's heavy lift community. 14H-47ER airframes will not transform the RAF overnight, but they will redistribute risk in the places that matter, range rings, crew workload, night approaches, and sustainment under fire. They will also lock in a transatlantic industrial anchor that brings both advantages and constraints, smoother interoperability and shared spares on the one hand, the choreography of approvals and technology protections on the other. The wager is that the benefits dominate in the environments the UK expects to face. On current evidence, it is a prudent wager, and one that, if executed with discipline, will leave commanders with more options, fewer sorties, and steadier tempo when it counts.